What's up, everybody? This is the Adventures of Alcaraz Pregnancy Update Podcast, and I am here today, Miranda Alcaraz, all alone. Julian is not with me today. He just left the office here um, because we have no childcare today, and we usually record these podcasts on Friday, um, but Julian's mother, who is Knox's caretaker normally during the work week at least, um, is out of town. So here I am, solo so that you guys don't have to deal with us trying to keep Knox quiet <laughs> while we chat. Uh, this is week 30 to 31. Tomorrow, um, I will be 31 weeks pregnant, so that means the weeks are now down to single digits, and uh, that's wild. I remember um, when I first found out I was pregnant, there was like someone in our community, I mean, there's lots of pregnant women in this reparking community all the time, but I remember seeing someone in the community who was like over 30 weeks and thinking like, oh man, like they're so close. That's so awesome. And now here we are. So um, only nine weeks left. Uh, we got home from our trip um, to Southern California. So our four days of Disney and then the street parking massive meetup that I guess, uh, yeah, I recorded last week's episode um, before the night before the meetup. So I could talk a little bit about the meetup and how it went. So Saturday last week we did, while we were still in uh, Orange County in Irvine, we did a meetup um, that was really cool and really meaningful for us. Uh, the very first meetup that we ever did was street parking. So a meetup for those of you that are not street parking members is literally we just throw up a post and say, hey, meet us here at this date and this time to work out and bring your dumbbells. And the very first time we ever did that was um, in March of 2018, right before we were about to move here to Washington, we thought, well, if we're gonna leave Southern California, there's quite a few members here, we should do a meetup and get to meet them before we leave. And so that was two years ago. And then we did uh, this meetup, there was like 15 people there or something like that. Um, this meetup, we did at the exact same location and there was over a hundred people that showed up. And it was just Julian, Knox, and I. Um, as far as like coaching staff, we had we had um, a F Salvi was with us filming, and we had uh, Julian's mom was there, and her partner Norman, who helps us with apparel, was there. Um, but it was us just managing a hundred people and putting them through a workout, and just to see the side by side photos and everything. Um, Knox was like um, seven months old in those first in the, at that first meetup, and now here we are, um, I guess, almost deep into being over seven months pregnant with our second and the growth of the community. It's like um, the side by side photos are a visual representation of our life for the last two years and what we've been working on and doing, both with our family and uh, with this community and. Our, our business. So that was really cool. It was a really fun time. It was perfect weather. Um, that day I did get, uh, I think I was definitely not drinking enough water. Actually, I know I wasn't drinking enough water. Um, it was pretty warm, especially because we're used to Washington now. So where it wasn't a hot day at all for Southern California standards, it was warmer than what I'm used to. And we were standing outside in the sun um, for a couple hours and talking a lot and taking a lot of photos and walking around a lot and moving a lot. Um, we de we had water, but we were so busy that I definitely didn't drink enough. And um, later that day as we were driving, or not driving, flying home, I was having a ton of Braxton Hicks contractions. Like I'm talking like every five minutes. I was having one and I was like, am I about to like go into labor on this airplane? Like what's going on here? This is not good. Luckily there were short flights, but I know it was just because there was a lot of movement. There was a lot of time in the sun and not enough water on that day going straight into a longish travel day. Um, our flight didn't leave till like six o'clock that night. And that doesn't sound late, but with a toddler and a long day before it, 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 we were exhausted by the time we got home. We got home at like almost 11, I want to say, because we had two flights and Knox was a drunk, delirious toddler. Like he was like in the San Francisco airport, just I've never seen anything like it from him. Like it was, he was out of it, but he did really good and we were just tired. Um, of course, we came home 
to our beautiful, completely torn apart home. And uh, it was funny. Uh, so if you've been listening to this podcast, you'll know that um, we're, we're going through a, a massive renovation of our downstairs. And people at the meetup were like, oh, my gosh, are you guys going to go home to your home being like done? <laughs> and I was like, definitely not. It's probably going to be worse. And it was definitely worse. Like it's we're probably in the darkest stage of it right now of just like drywall dust everywhere and just it's a mess. They took the cabinet doors off in our kitchen and our kitchen's usable for sure. But just everything's exposed and it looks like just a cluttery mess and the whole house is just a just a pile of clutter right now. And so that's what we came home to, um, which was stressful and we were tired and uh, luckily Knox slept pretty good that night and uh, I was able to rehydrate and feel good and everything. But um, four days at Disney and then that that meetup followed by the travel day, It's it was not a relaxing vacation. Definitely good times and good memories and good feelings but as far as like coming home super relaxed definitely not and did not come home to a relaxed situation either uh we had a um an ultrasound appointment this week though which was it's always so exciting so if you've been listening to this journey since the beginning um when I had my anatomy scan at 20 weeks so I guess like now almost 11 weeks ago um and I might have done it a little bit before 20 weeks actually now that I think about it uh they noticed that there was like knock or knocks baby B's stomach, um, not not his stomach, like the actual organ of his stomach. They said that it was like slightly enlarged. And so they wanted to check it again. So they had me come back four weeks later. Everything else was perfect. Four weeks later, and they checked it again. And this time they said, well, it's not necessarily enlarged, but it's like longer than a normal, like the, the length is, um, abnormal slightly like bordering on abnormal and we they made it very confusing to us whether or not that should be something we should be concerned about or not they they never gave us really a good answer and this was when I was still seeing my OB um and hadn't switched over to the midwife yet uh so we were left kind of wondering like well are we supposed to have this tested again um is he okay what like what does this mean they they were very unclear about it uh, so when we switched over to the midwife, we let them know about that. And obviously they could see it in my records too. Um, and just said, they said, we don't think we need to check it. Like based on the information that they sent us, he's fine. And just for my peace of mind and anyone that's been pregnant knows that like any little tiny thing that they tell you might be slightly abnormal, whether it's he's too light or too heavy or his femur length is a little shorter than like anything. And you're like, oh my gosh, there's something wrong with my baby. Um, and some doctors are good at delivering that information and many, many are not. And so it actually makes can make it worse. Um, so we told the midwife, we would love to have you guys look at it. I would love to hear from you looking at it, what you think and what you see so that we can just put that behind us if there's really nothing wrong um, or obviously make the proper plans if if there is something that could potentially be off. So we got to do another ultrasound. This is not one that I would have been able to do otherwise, but because of that slight little thing on his anatomy scan, we were able to do it again. And uh, they did like the whole thing over again. So it was, they didn't just look at his stomach. They went through the leg bones and the arm bones and the skull and the brain and the kidneys and the heart and all four chambers of the heart. And they did the whole thing again, which was really cool. He's so big in there now. The very first thing that they said <laughs> is they were like, oh my gosh, that's a lot of hair on this baby for only 30 weeks. Like that's something you would expect to see at like 36 weeks, but that's like, they showed us the little hair floating off of his head in the amniotic fluid. And they said that baby's got a lot of hair for how much longer he's gonna be in there. And so Knox had a pretty good amount of hair. I would, I've definitely seen babies with a lot more hair than Knox had, but, uh, now the joke is that he's going to come out with like, you know, just looking just like Julian and just just so manly um, and just have this full head of hair. Uh, that was really cool. And then they did some 3D photos, which I am weird about. I think they're weird, but he was so cute. And, um, and he just has these lips that are just like 
massive, these really massive big lips. And um, I've been wondering this whole time because my belly is so much bigger than it was. <clears throat> At least it seems like it is to me um, that then when I was pregnant with Knox and I was like, they're going to tell me this baby's huge. And so I asked the lady, are you going to be able to tell me how big he is? Because they do like, I don't know how accurate it is, to be honest, but they'll like measure their like legs and their belly and their head and the length of the baby. And they'll they'll tell you how much they that he or she weighs. And um, he was uh, three pounds, five ounces, which they said was 46 percentile. So like right in the middle of average. And um, so that was also cool to hear. I mean, not that there's anything wrong with having a 10 pound baby, but it sounds more difficult to get that out of your body than if it's not that big. Um, Knox was six pounds and 14 ounces when he was born. I do still believe that baby B will be bigger than him because he was like 30th percentile or something like that. But that was really cool. He was moving around like crazy, of course another ultrasound tech, this is like the third or fourth one at this point, is like this baby is wild. Like he is going for it, like moving around so much. And um, yeah, it's just funny. They said my placenta is in the back, uh, which is the reason, one of the reasons that I can feel it so much because if your placenta is in front, you don't feel the kicks as much, but it's mine's behind him, so I can feel it. He's still breech, which means his head is up. They told me not to worry about his head being up until 36 weeks. And actually, when we talked to the midwife about that, she said that because um, I've had a baby uh, before who wasn't breech, that there is more space once you're pregnant the second time, that if we needed to make him turn by using our hands, she was confident that they would be able to do that um, because it's my second baby. So that was nice because I was a little worried. Sometimes when I Google like 30 weeks pregnant and the images that come up like with the drawing of the mom with the pregnant baby, I feel like half of them at this point have the baby with the head down and it was kind of making me feel like oh crap like is his head should his head be down but she said not to worry about it for at least six more weeks so um that was great and I guess of course the main point of the ultrasound is that his stomach was completely fine um the midwife came in after so we did the ultrasound and then we had like 30 minutes in between, and then we went back and we had an appointment with a midwife, and she said, your baby looks perfect. Um, His heart rate is beautiful. His size is just where it should be. Um, Your blood pressure, your everything is looking great. Like, you're, it's great. Everything's fantastic. So that was a really cool, it's just, it's just a peace of mind thing because your mind really starts to play tricks if you feel like, one little weird ache or even like those contractions that I was having on the plane. I was like, oh man, like, is he going to come like super early or whatever? Um, Came home from the trip feeling physically pretty good too, given all that we went through um, as far as walking and standing and carrying Knox and being in the sun and everything. So um, other than being a little tired and, and all that, it was all good. We had a major that night after the (laughs) ultrasound, I think it was that night, um, something went a little wonky with the street parking website. And I didn't see it that night, but a couple of our staff saw it. Um, They didn't think too much about it because it's something that has happened before when um, our, the company that we use to host our uh, members only website, Sometimes when they do maintenance, it makes our site look a little bit weird, but usually it's like resolved by the morning so that they weren't too concerned. Well, in the morning it was not resolved and we had like everything was formatted weird and there was a bunch of stuff missing and links that weren't working. And uh, from that moment until, I mean, we're still kind of in it today. So we're on like day three of this. Um we've been in a panic because so the website was readable but just didn't look great and then somehow the night the next night it became completely not readable not usable all of our members that were going there luckily we uh we communicated it to them but um street parking is a is my child as much as Knox is as much as baby b is and um 
it felt like one of my kids was sick and I was, I'm pregnant and I've got a sick kid and my house is torn apart. You know, it was, um, it's very stressful to us. And I think because of how far along I am in the pregnancy, I was telling somebody, one of our um, employees yesterday when I was talking to him on the phone, that not with the house being in the state that it's in and the business being in the state that it was uh, at that time, nine weeks felt like nine minutes. I was like, this is not enough time. Like, I, like how am I going to be able to like step away? Like the house isn't going to be done. All the stuff needs to be done for the business. We have a lot coming up as far as like releases and travel and all of this planning that needs to be done. And everyone on our staff was sidetracked for has been this week to try to fix this problem. And so we're all taken away from the stuff that we were working on and everyone's plates are very full. And, um, you know, it just, I had to become very aware of taking care of myself and not just staying up all night long to try to like fix things myself or worry about it or anything because um, I also have to take care of baby B and I also have to be there for Knox. When I was pregnant with Knox, I pulled a lot of all-nighters for sure, but it doesn't really work that way now with having Knox um, also to take care of and everything. Um, so I've had to be way more strategic with my time in this pregnancy than I was even when I was pregnant with him. And then, um, I mean, it was, it was emotional. It was a panic for sure. And anyone that has anything super stressful like that come up uh, while they're pregnant knows it's like makes it even that much harder to to deal with I guess um, we had a member actually who w works in the hospital I think she's an ER nurse and she, they had to run a code um, and she was like 32 or four weeks pregnant something like that anyway it caused her adrenaline and cortisol and everything to go up so high that she couldn't lower it back down they ended up, um, she ended up having her baby early, like inducing her to just because her body was just in this state of stress after that. Um, so I'm trying to be aware of that stuff. Um, when I was about this pregnant with Knox, I had a friend who passed away. Um, one of my closest, actually my very closest best childhood friend passed away. And I was thinking about that yesterday during all the stress of, uh, the website and it really put things into perspective of like it's just a website and it'll be fine and that was something that um was really hard during my last pregnancy that it made the website stuff feel small and people i, I mean life still goes on around you when you're pregnant you can't pause tragedies you can't pause natural disasters or anything like that and um just making sure that we know how to take care of ourselves and um, know when to ask for help and know when to feel like you're doing the best you can um, and not try to power through because you are, are taking care of more than just yourself at this point. Um, I had to really remember that uh, this week. But um, the good news, the best news was the day before that happened, I did get the reassurance that he's just doing awesome in there. And so that did make me feel a little bit more comfortable as we were going through all that. And we're getting through it. We're almost through it now. Um, things are being put back together for sure. Hopefully my house will start feeling like it's being put back together soon too. Um, but that was this week. We only have nine weeks left. Uh, we've got more travel coming up and just a lot of stuff that will happen in the next nine weeks. Um, getting to the point where I do have uh, doctor's appointments like every two weeks now for the next few weeks and then it's every week and so stuff will be stuff will be happening physically i feel great still working out five days a week um modifying for sure um but i think it's kept me feeling good and feeling sane and just giving me an outlet to feel some sort of normalcy during this so that's it and uh we'll check in with you guys next time